yeah very good morning children how are you doing i think uh, this is the last uh, session for the our online classes and anyway from uh, next week we are going to meet in uh, our school campus right so we are going to deal with uh, session 4 uh, lesson challenges in improving agriculture products right you know chemical fertilizers in our previous la uh, previous session we learned about this natural manure right so actually the plants get uh, many of the nutrients from uh, the soil you know by decomposing by decomposing the dead bodies of uh, plants and animals these uh, microorganisms will add uh, nutrients to the soil okay so from the soil the plants are able to get uh, their uh, nutrients but uh, that uh, that is a very very slow process slow process and a time consuming process and that we when uh, a crop is uh, grown in a field then what happens then automatically availability of uh, nutrients decreases after after each and every crop season so for example there is a, a rice bag in your family it's of uh, 50 kgs and the daily you are uh, using 2 kgs so after 20 days what happens after 20 days how many uh, how many rice uh, can you find in the bag yeah for uh, 20 days 40 kilos 40 kilos of uh, rice gets uh, exhausted and uh, you will get only 10 that means day by day the amount of uh, rice becomes less in the same way in the soil also as uh, we are growing the crops see the number sorry the amount of uh, nutrients becomes less and uh, less right so and uh, already I told you by decomposition of uh, by decomposing this uh, plants and animal materials the plants can uh, replenish the nutrients but uh, that is a very very slow process so what is the other alternate means so by using chemical fertilizers chemical fertilizers see here these are ready-made fertilizers okay directly we can supply fertilizers to the soil okay so here in this session we are going to deal with this uh, chemical fertilizers the percentage of nutrients differ from one uh, from uh, one chemical fertilizer to another fertilizer here you can find uh, see in this table we can find different types of uh, chemical fertilizers like uh, urea then a super phosphate ammonium sulfate potassium nitrate so if we carefully observe this uh, NPK ratio NPK ratio can you say that all these uh, NPKs are the equal in uh, all the chemical fertilizers no when you take this uh, urea in urea we can find only nitrogen that to be 46 percent while the phosphorus and potassium are completely absent in the super phosphate we can find only eight to nine percent of phosphorus ammonium sulfate nitrogen 21 percent like this okay so from this table we can say that uh, the amount of uh, nutrients will change from uh, one kind of fertilizer to another fertilizer okay so here what you have to do means how much amount of fertilizer you are uh, supplying to the field this is not uh, important so most of the farmers they think that by supplying more and more fertilizers we can improve the fertility but uh, here what is uh, more important means finally availability to the plant availability means uh, how much uh, nutrients are available to the plant that is important Correct. Right. we must see that whether whatever the chemicals whatever the fertilizers we are adding to the crop all these uh, fertilizers are available to the plant or not that is uh, we need to remember all right so here how we can apply this uh, chemical fertilizers to the crop means by several methods okay generally in our fields we can find that uh, the farmer is a uh, sprinkling the farmer is uh, sprinkling the fertilizer in uh, the field have you seen that yeah like this okay sprinkling and then some farmers before they supply the water what they do they dissolve uh, that uh, fertilizers in that water or first they supply this fertilizer and then they supply water all right and uh, what's the next one so place under the soil like this they dig uh, they dig uh, the soil okay then uh, they bury that uh, fertilizer correct right. so these are the three ways 
how this chemical fertilizers can be supplied to the plant. Got it? Right. Now, the method determines the effect. Here, for example, take uh, two plants. Here we can find a IR8 and a PETA. What are these two means? These are the two rice varieties. Rice uh, varieties and uh, out of this, this IR8 is, uh, is what? It is a hybrid. It is a hybrid variety of uh, rice. So here, to these two varieties of uh, rice, we supply the same amount of uh, nitrogen. Same amount of uh, nutrient is uh, applied. Okay, but uh, what is the result? Means the result is uh, like this. So here, if we carefully observe this uh, IR8, IR8, here the growth is uh, very high. Growth and uh, even production, production from this IR8 is a uh, very high when compared with the beta. Correct. In this way, so even though we supply the same fertilizer, the different varieties of plants will receive uh, these uh, fertilizers in a different ways. Okay, that's why we cannot expect. We cannot expect uh, simply by providing fertilizer to any plant, that plant will produce the same quantity. Correct. So the amount of a uh, product will differ from one variety to another variety, even though we supply the same amount of a uh, nutrient or the fertilizer. Got it. Then a crop protection. So what is the next step means how to protect uh, the crop so protection means no need to arrange this uh, body guards and the next uh, you know all these things but uh, here just like uh, the human beings the plants are also affected by different types of uh, enemies enemies like uh, weeds the next uh, insects pests all these things okay now let's deal with this the first one that is weeds actually what are weeds weeds means these are the unwanted plants. Say for example, we are growing rice. But after a few days, if we carefully observe the field, can you find only rice plants? No. Along with the rice, we can also find some other plants which we don't need. Right? So such unwanted plants which grow along with the crop plants can be called as weeds. So here, when a weed is present in the crop, we get much damage. What does that mean? Whatever that means, yeah, see, weeds affect uh, the supply of nutrients. Whatever the nutrients we supply to the field, most of these nutrients are uh, used by these weeds. And in the same way, sunshine, uh, sunlight, much sunlight will be used by these uh, weeds and even water. Whatever the water we are supplying, the farmer may think that we are supplying a uh, sufficient amount of water. But uh, most of that water is used by these weeds and they grow well. Correct. So, in this way, when weeds are present in the rice crop or any crop, then automatically the production will be decreased. Okay, now, you know, in the 8th class, in the 8th class, in the agriculture lesson, you got this. That means, uh, this, uh, this is the list of uh, weed plants we can find in the different varieties of uh, crop plants. Like, uh, say, this uh, Garika, then the Wanza, then the Varipilla Gaddi, Sukabogi, Daraka, then the Buruda Thongu. These, uh, all these weeds will grow along with the rice or the paddy, right? And we can also see there's a gunugu, then a gaddi chamanti, jiluga in a vegetable crops, in a vegetable crops. And then pogak malle in a tobacco plants and the next pulichinta in a mitchi and the cotton fields. These are the different varieties of uh, weed plants we can find uh, commonly in our crop fields. Got it. Okay, and uh, you see, in uh, the beginning, in the beginning, in uh, section one, we learned about this uh, table. That means, uh, here, if uh, you observe this one, weeding. Weeding means, actually it is not weeding, it's a de-weeding. De-weeding means removal of uh, weeds. So when de-weeding is done once, then we got a production how much? There is a 4040. But when it is done uh, for the second time, then uh, we got uh, much uh, change. What is that? That is uh, 5,200. That means uh, around uh, 1,200 kgs. We can find uh, an increase in the uh, production. Correct. Okay, that's why. Right. But whenever you keep the weed plants as it is, then now uh, we get very, very less production. Whatever the farmer 
uh, do uh, different types of uh, efforts to increase the production, the production will be very, very less because of this uh, weed plants. Well, okay, that's right. It is the prime, uh, prime res uh, responsibility of uh, the farmer to remove the weeds from time to time. Okay. Then uh, the next one, insects and the plant disease. You know, different types of insects, then a pest, then there's some microorganisms like a bacteria, fungi, then there are virus, all these things cause uh, different types of infections and disease. And so, automatically, they show their effect on uh, crop production. Okay, whenever we observe some of the insects, the eater uh, stems, the eater uh, stems. Here, can you see this? The eater uh, stems and then the nibble leaves. Nibble, nibble means they make holes. They make holes to these uh, leaves. And the next, uh, they destroy roots, destroy roots. When a root is uh, destroyed, then automatically the plant will die. Why means it cannot get uh, nutrients and water from uh, the soil. Okay, and uh, some microbes also destroy the plants. You know, we cannot see these microbes, but we can see their effect. When they are present, we cannot see them. But uh, how we can identify that uh, microbes are present means because of their, uh, because of their effect. Okay, what type of uh, destruction they cause means the first one, shriveling. Shriveling means the leaf will get folded. You know, can you see this? Yeah, in this way, the edges, edges of the leaf or the, see this leaf uh, get uh, folded inwards. Okay, so that is called shriveling. And the next uh, discoloration. Discoloration means, what is the color of leaf? Yeah, green. But uh, here, because of this, this uh, some parts of the leaf turns into yellow or a brown like this. And the next, uh, rusting of a stem and the leaves. Over the stem and the leaves, we can find the brown colored patches, the rusting, right? And even fungal growth like this, fungal growth. How we can identify that? That means over uh, the paints over the plant pots we can find a uh, white powdery structures okay right okay so by that we can say it's uh, because of fungus so how to control this uh, insects or a pest then microbes all these things means by using chemicals we go for the chemicals so we use different types of chemicals like insecticides to kill insects then a pesticides to kill pest and the next fungicides to kill fungi and then a weed decides to control weeds like this but uh, these chemicals will destroy all the insects that means whether these insects are harmful or useful they won't care simply they kill all the insects but uh, you see uh, we know that uh, all the insects are not harmful okay but uh, among them we can also find say some very very important uh, insects like uh, honeybees butterflies then uh, say some uh, in this different types of uh, insects they play very very important role in the pollination process so when we use this insecticides these insecticides will kill naturally these are harmful insects but also there's a useful insects as a result this pollination process will be affected and that leads to reduction in uh, crop production Okay, then now uh, here that we because of this uh, insect science we can also find one more problem. What is that? They develop immunity. They develop uh, immunity. When uh, we are spraying uh, the same chemicals, then automatically they develop a resistance. Okay, so after a few days, even though we are spraying these uh, chemicals, there will be no use at all. Okay, it becomes uh, useless. And uh, sometimes these chemicals, what happens means from the plant, they fall down over the soil and from soil they go into water and uh, then and then water bends then uh, into the water bodies so water bodies get uh, polluted and then when now uh, we drink that water we get different types of disease and even you know it may lead to death of that person no now and then in newspapers we can uh, observe that uh, some other farmers they get suicide by taking uh, insecticides so these insecticides don't think that they are harmful to only insects. Even to humans, they are very, very dangerous. So that's why we should be very, very careful while we are handling with these chemicals. Okay, and when we take our state, 
in our state there's a prakasham and a guntur prakasham and a guntur districts are using more and more amount of uh, these chemicals okay which is not uh, good instead of that we can go for the natural control methods right okay then uh, what is the solution for this means natural control natural control means you know you may study about this uh, food chains you know we can in a food chain we can find a pretty good like a grasses plants and these are taken by some insects and those insects are taken by some birds like this so in this way so when now we can find one insect say for example a this insect can be taken as a food by another insect b right so in this way what we have to do means whatever the insect that is causing damage to our crop we need to find out yeah there is a this insect so what is its enemy what is its enemy so b is the enemy to a so what you have to do means we need to use this b insects when we use this b insects they kill and the they kill and the control this a insects okay but uh, this b cannot cause any damage to the crops okay what you call such uh, insects means we call them as a uh, predatory insects predatory insects and in the same way we can also find some birds birds are also eating this insects we call them as a predatory birds right and what's the next one means capturing and killing the harmful insects there is also one method what are the insects uh, some are big size so we can capture them and we can kill them but it's not at all very easy thing it's a very slow and uh, time consuming process but uh, for this also we can find out one solution what is that means you know now and then in our home we may find that uh, some insects come into our home then uh, what your father do then uh, immediately your father asks you to switch off the lights okay why why means when there is a lighting then uh, these insects will be attracted will be attracted got it the same method can be used in our fields also so in our fields here and there if you uh, arrange this uh, lights lights then what happens all these insects they they all these insects they cluster cluster means they group uh, around these lights and then uh, they die okay so that of course we can capture them easily or uh, if you want we can kill them got it okay and uh, what do you call that method means that one can be called as a uh, deepapu teralu deepapu teralu right can you see this in this way we can arrange, uh, we can arrange uh, the lights and uh, so that we can control them okay <clears throat> so what's the next one means natural pest control methods how we can control this uh, pest naturally means you know generally the farmers use synthetic pyrethroids synthetic pyrethroids pyrethroids means like a insecticides then a pesticides fungicides all these things can be called as a pyrethroids and uh, these insects you know whenever we use this uh, insects some of the insects are uh, harmful and uh, some are useful okay so here we're talking about uh, here we're talking about uh, the insects which are useful for us okay whenever you take you take uh, these uh, insects say what's the first one spider have you seen spiders can be found uh, generally in our surroundings then dragonfly yeah you know well about that the next uh, mirids then uh, ladybird beetle so these uh, insects what they do means they eat up the eat up uh, the worms like a uh, just seeds have you seen this yeah just said the next uh, trips and even the uh, stem borders correct so here we are not using any chemicals but by using their enemies we are killing them and uh, trichoderma fungi trichoderma fungi uh, see this yeah so it lives in a uh, eggs of a stem borders then a uh, tobacco caterpillar then a uh, gram caterpillar and then destroy them and this is the enemy to all this uh, insects so it can easily control them the next basal is thuringiensis you know in the eighth class we got this bt we call this as okay it can control some of the pests and even mixed crop mixed crop what is meant by mixed crop 
when we grow more than one type of uh, crop in the same field at a time then we call that as a mixed crop so example so here paddy so after the cultivation of paddy if you grow this black gram and groundnuts it controls tungru virus tungru virus in the rice and uh, after cultivation of a cotton if you go for a maize and a ginger leaf then we can control what there is a gram caterpillar gram caterpillar so it is not mixed crop we can say crop rotation crop rotation method right then it's uh, after red gram maize and corn so by growing them we can control spotted bollworm and uh, dried uh, disease and uh, what we call this kind of a uh, crops means we call them as a uh, akarshaka pantalu akarshaka pantalu okay then uh, you know for improvement in a uh, food production sustaining soil health and the environmental production or uh, both sides of uh, agricultural practices so if you want to increase the food production we must maintain what we have to maintain soil health and at the same time environmental protection okay in uh, but uh, today because of this uh, greedy nature we are not at all taking care of this uh, environmental protection we are using uh, these chemicals in the over over okay that's why they cause different types of uh, pollutions water pollutions air pollution then soil pollution like this okay but uh, it's not a good thing and the farmer should be aware of uh, maintaining good quality and also innovative practices in uh, agriculture okay when we are uh, practicing this kind of uh, innovative methods then automatically we can we can improve this uh, production okay for example say so here hybridization you know whatever the vegetable or a fruit we can take in the market albus all these are the hybrids okay what is the use of them so that a uh, lot in size and the round shape and uh, even with the more pulp but uh, with the uh, less seed okay so that uh, we get a good amount of food okay and even different color tomatoes have you seen so here tomato will be in the orange or red color but here can you see in a violet color violet color purple color like this and uh, even bananas bananas also available naturally these two different varieties of uh, fruits and vegetables are available in uh, different colors that is possible just because of this uh, hybridization okay you know rello it's not a spelling mistake it's a uh, correct rello rello means it is the new color which is developed by crossing red and yellow tomatoes or a red and yellow colored flowers okay so can you see this here the flower is yellow in color but uh, uh, inside we can find the red color and that is called as a rello color and then uh, pomato don't think that it's a spelling mistake it's a pomato it is a correct what is this a pomato means this is a hybrid between uh, two plants like a uh, tomato and a potato tomato and a potato so here by by using this a uh, pomato plant we get two types of uh, vegetables you know in the root system we can get uh, potatoes and in the shoot system we get uh, tomatoes or there is also one kind of innovative thing and the next here we can find a uh, one uh, farmer there is a gudivada nagaratnam naidu so he invented he used uh, the sasrivari srivari means system of rice rice intensification okay so by using this method what he did means the means uh, he produced 92 bags of rice from one acre from one acre actually to get uh, 30 bags of rice from one acre it's a very very difficult task but here by using the same same uh, one acre of land he produced a how much there is 92 okay so what is the reason for that means there is a srivari srivari in this method what he used means that means uh, he grown less number of seeds less number of seeds but uh, what is the technique he used here means reduce the he reduced the amount of water amount of water actually normal normal farmers for one acre of uh, land uh, they provide how much amount of water 5000 5000 liters of water but here this farmer he produced he provided only 2502 
3000 liters that means uh, around 50 percent of water can be saved correct but even by using a less amount of water he produced uh, more he produced uh, more correct this all said to be innovative methods okay and uh, so by using this kind of innovative methods we can get uh, more and more production okay so that's all for today and with this we come to the end of this lesson and uh, see you in our school have a nice day and be careful with this covid thank you